Hello, everybody. Um, how are you this afternoon? Good. Um, I'm Pat Cumming, and I'm on the board of the Vancouver Writers Fest. Welcome to the master class with Ben Clanton. We're so pleased that you all could make it here today. And also, this event is being live streamed to classrooms across the province, so big shout out to all those people who are joining us from other places. The Vancouver Writers Fest carries out its work and this event today on the ancestral and unceded lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. To start off with, we have a message from Chief Ian Campbell of the Squamish Nation. Hi everybody. It's an honor to welcome you to another year of Vancouver's Writers Fest. My name is Chief Ian Campbell. I'm from the Squamish Nation. It's an honor to welcome you to the shared territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil families. We are here on Granville Island, next to our ancient village of Snock. And we're gonna have an awesome year. Welcome everybody, Hoichika Osiem. Okay, so before we get started, I just have a few notes to deliver. Um, first of all, if you have a cell phone, can you please silence it at this time? And um, for teachers and parents later on this evening, you'll receive a feedback survey by email. So if you would take a moment to complete that, that would be great because it gives us lots of good feedback so that we can make our events better and better. Uh, following this event, there will be sale of books in the lobby and uh, Ben will be signing books over here if you want to bring your book in to get signed. I also want to say a big thank you to all the volunteers and supporters, especially our title sponsor, CMHC Granville Island, and all of our government funders. This year, the Festival Bookstore is located at the end of Cartwright Street um, in, in the Origins Coffee location. So today, uh, what's going to happen is that Ben is going to talk to you for about 45 minutes, maybe do a little drawing, and then we'll turn it over to you to ask him some questions. So now I'm really happy to be able to introduce Ben Clanton. Narwhals, jellyfish, and waffles. Where can you find all of those cool things in one place? In the imagination and the books of Ben Clanton, of course. Ben lives in Seattle with his family and his dog, where he loves to write, draw, read, and of course, eat waffles. He's written and illustrated many, many books, but is probably best known for his Narwhal and Jelly series. Today, he's going to share some of his drawing and storytelling tricks with you. Maybe even something spooky from the book A Super Scary Halloween. Let's give a big welcome to Ben Clanton. <laughs> Thank you. Ahoy, I'm Ben, and uh, I'm here, of course, to talk with you today about potatoes. <laughs> yes, potatoes. Maybe we'll talk a bit about narwhals, too. Oh, there we go. And a number of other things, because books can be about all sorts of stuff. But it's actually a bit weird that I'm standing up here because when I was age of some of you in this room, I wasn't so sure about books. Anyone here in third grade? Second grade? Fourth grade? Quite a few fourth grade? All right. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about when I was going to third grade. So some of you would have had experience going into third grade before. Hopefully your first day of third grade didn't go like mine. It'd help if I turned this on. There we go. So. Share a bit about this kid, um, who was super excited when he was going into third grade, that kid being me, um, because my family moved from Portland, Oregon, to Kalispell, Montana, and to me this was pretty much the best thing that could ever have happened, because I figured everyone in Montana was a cowboy, and I thought that then made me a cowboy. So I got the boots, I had this big belt buckle, I had this bolo tie, Cowboy hat, show up the first day of third grade looking like this. Look around. Yeah, none of the other kids were wearing any of those things. They were wearing sneakers and t-shirts. I was disappointed, a fair bit embarrassed. And uh, I mean, I thought, you know, other kids would be showing up on horseback to school, but no such luck. All just coming in cars. 
and it got worse from there. So later that morning, my teacher passes out this little cup of liquid. And it looks to me like it's juice. At least to me, I thought, I thought the other kids were drinking it. It was not juice. It was a fluoride rinse. You were supposed to swish it around in your mouth and spit it back out. But I, I drank it. <laughs> Next minute, my stomach's not feeling so good. Next thing I know, I am throwing up all over the girl across from me. Her brand new dress that she had made with her mom for the first day of school. Yeah, uh, no one was going to forget this Ben Clanton kid. I, I was making quite the first impression. And it got even worse from there. <laughs> so that morning, still that morning, another thing gets passed out, the first in the Boxcar Children series. And my teacher says for the next 30 minutes, she wants us to read quietly to ourselves. So I open up the book. And I'm looking inside, I'm going, where are the pictures? And there are some pictures in the book, but there are a lot more words, and many more words than I had ever read in a book before. Well, I didn't want to be left behind, so I, I, I started reading as much as I could. I look over, the girl across from me, now cleaned up, is already turning the page by the time I get through the first sentence or two. So not to be left behind, I turn the page. And every time she turns the page, I turn the page. She was a very fast reader. I'd catch a few words here and there on each of the pages, and I kind of made up a story in my mind based off of those words. I looked around the room, and while she might have been one of the best readers in the room, she was by far not the only one. Most, most of the other kids just seemed to be pretty far ahead of me when it came to reading. And it was at that point that I began to go, I'm not sure I belong here. Um, and it would be a struggle for a number of years after that coming to, to like books. A couple things that did help me find my place, though. One thing was drawing. I loved to, to draw. Still do. Uh, and the other kids seemed to think my drawings were pretty good. In fact, they would ask for my drawings sometimes. I'd draw them as superheroes. I'd draw bookmarks for the other kids. Um, and that began to become a way where I was like, oh, I'm good at this. And I started to latch on to that. But the reading thing continued to kind of move on without me. Until my grandma, who was determined to make a reader out of me, sent a certain book to my mom going, this is by this up and coming uh, British author about this uh, magical kid who goes to this magical school. And, and maybe it's something that, that Ben will like. Anyone know which book I'm talking about? Harry Potter, Harry Potter yes. Um, and my mom starts reading aloud a chapter of that to me every night. And it's pretty soon that I'm going, oh, I need to know what happens next. So I started to read ahead. And slowly at first, because did I become a great reader overnight? No, it's like balancing pineapples on your head. It takes a lot of practice, right? The more you do it, the better at it you're going to get. And those pineapples are going to fall a lot. And the same thing goes for writing. The same thing goes for drawing. It's like those pineapples. It's going to be a lot of mistakes along the way. But eventually, with practice, you get the hang of it. And what that book did for me, reading aloud, as well as comics. Comics were another thing that I was really into. Uh, they, they helped keep me interested in potentially becoming a reader until eventually I did, and started making my own books later when I was in college. I was visiting this elementary school across the street from the college I went to and reading books with the students there. And I was enjoying them just as much, if not more, than the kids I was reading with. Anyone know the book, No, David? No, David, no! Such a funny book. Um, I loved reading it aloud, and I was going, I wonder, could I make a book? I wonder what that would look like. And so I decided to start trying. But before I share anything about any of my books, I want to share another book with you. I've got it right here. It's my favorite book in this world. And I want to show you my favorite picture from it. Would you like to see? Yeah. OK. Can I get drum roll, please? And here it is. 
This is what 13 years of making books will get you. Wait. Can you see all the detail, all the colors? Here, let, let me make it just a little bit larger for you. There we go. Now you can see it all? You, you see the bananas playing badminton with the, the unicorn hippo? Yeah. This is where any book I make begins, is with this and this wild contraption. Our minds, our imaginations, our ability to put something on that page that maybe no one has seen before. So I'm curious, when you look up there, what do you see? What's in your best book ever? Does anyone want to share? When you look up there, what would be in your, the ultimate book for you? Yes. A unicorn sli sliding down a rainbow, jumping down a rainbow, and it's eating ice cream. Under where? Oh, under Vancouver? Awesome. Love it. Yes. Someone eating a potato? Up there. Don't tell Rot. What? Potatoes and ice cream? I'm digging that. Yes. Yes. What's that? Like the planet? Yeah. Seeing some planets going on up there. Uh, let's get one more suggestion of what we see up there. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, someone, over the someone what over the rainbow? Biking over the rainbow. Biking over the rainbow. Ooh, that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. There are so many possibilities of what we could fill this page with. And that's what I love about books, is they can be about so many different things. And there's already so many subjects that they cover. But if, if there's a book that doesn't cover the thing you want to have a book be about, there's always the possibility that you could be the one to make that book. So I want to fill that page, though. And to do that, I want to play a drawing game. I call this Mixmal, where I take different creatures, animals, I mix them together, get something brand new. A narwhal and a potato make an artato. Here's a few more of those. A snail and a sloth make a snoth. This is, in fact, a moving image. It's just very, very slow. And here's narwhal and jelly. They make a gnarly, which I've got to make a book about at some point. I'm not entirely sure what that one will look like. This is uh, platycorn, who platycorn came about from a session just like this, where I ended up taking some suggestions on what to draw, ended up drawing it, and eventually made it into one of the narwhal and jelly books uh, in book seven, narwhal corn and jelly. This is me, Bob Sharafapus, who has not found a book yet and is feeling very sad about it. <laughs> Kaili the potato dude. And our character, the one we make today. So I need your help with this. So to me, the most important ingredient that goes into any book I make are the characters or the stars of the book. And by getting to know them, I get to know what their stories are. Fancy word for the character or star of the book. Does anyone know the fancy word I'm thinking of? Main character, another word for main character, it starts with a P. Yes. Protagonist. Protagonist. Exactly right. 10 points to you. Um, t uh, yeah, protagonist. So let's make a protagonist together by playing this drawing game. I need your suggestions, though, on what we should add together. So I need the best ultimate stuff that will make the best ultimate character for our best book ever. First suggestion. Dragon. Dragon. Excellent. Thank you. One of my favorite things to draw. And yes. Avocado. avocado. Yes. Dragons, avocados, definitely go together. And one more into the mix. Yes. Squirrel, Squirrel naturally. So squirrel, dragon, avocado, unicorn.
Wait, someone suggested unicorn, right? All right, so where to begin? Well, the first place I usually start is with the face. And especially the eyes. The eyes tell us a lot about a character, how they're feeling, what they're thinking. It's also the polite thing when we meet someone new, right? We look them in the eyes and say, hey, how's it going? I said, hey, how's it going? Doesn't have a mouth. You're right. It helped to have a mouth. Um, before we draw the mouth, though, I'm curious, how is our character feeling today? Does someone have a thought about that, about how our character might be feeling? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Excited. He's feeling excited. Looks a little nervous to me right now, but let's make that some excited nervous energy. So going to go with a big smile. I'll often act out how my character is feeling when I'm drawing them to try to get the expression right. So if I'm drawing an angry kitten, I'll pretend I'm an angry kitten. <laughs> Did you take my ice cream? <laughs> I really wanted that ice cream. I all. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I see, what do my eyes do? What are my eyebrows doing? What does my mouth do? But it's not just the face, right? Every part of the body can help show how our character is feeling. Um, so in the case of excited, so it turns out, do you have ice cream? No. Does anyone have some ice cream for, for this poor kitten? Yes? I have 100 buckets of ice cream. 100 buckets of ice cream. <laughs> and now what does my body do when I'm excited? Bounces up and down. Hands are going out, eyes are wide, mouth is open. So let's add to that. So how do I draw a bouncing avocado? Well, they have kind of a shape like this. And then we had squirrel in the mix too. I'm gonna add some like little squirrel-like legs and I'm trying to draw them jumping. And to show that it's going off the ground, I can draw like a shadow down below. So it's jumping up. And yes, I agree, we need that tail, right? That's like, when you think of a squirrel, you think of their tail. And they also have little whiskers, and I could do some excited whiskers. Okay, so we have some more ideas about what we need to add to this. I'm gonna take Quietly raised hands, please. What are our other suggestions? Yes. No hands. Okay, hands, those come in handy. So uh, some great hands like this and like this. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Those are wings. Um, <laughs> Another thing I do sometimes when I'm so excited I'm trying to like contain it, like my hands kind of go like this. So maybe I'll go with like some little dragon arms that are kind of going in towards the body excited. Okay, what else do we need? What do you think? The pit of the avocado. <laughs> Which I guess could kind of be like its belly here, right? It could have a... Avocado pit belly. Okay. What else? Ears. Yes. Okay, if I remember right, squirrel ears look a little bit like this. Oh. Bunny, bunny ears? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure that's how you draw squirrel ears. Well, it's a good thing to make him a little longer, right? Because then we can show even more just how excited this character is. Those ears are shooting way up. If the character was feeling sad, what do you think those ears would be doing? Yeah, drooping down, right? And in fact, we could really make that big and they could be drooping all the way down to the ground and like flopping down on the ground. But our character is excited. I'm feeling pretty good about this. We've got a nice mix. Um, what else? Uh, we, we need a name. 
So we've mixed and matched some different creatures and things together. We got this brand new character. Let's do something for its name kind of similar to that. What if we take the names of the creatures and put them together? So dragon, avocado, dravo, uh, and then squirrel. And then there's also some bunny that got in there. Squunny? This is Dravo Squunny. We have a character. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestions. Yes, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Um, our next best-selling book, Dravo Squunny. But in order to make a book about Dravo, we need to get to know this character better. And so this gets me to the next big ingredient that goes into any book I make. So characters, they're at the heart of my stories. And they're what keep me coming back to any book that I love, are the characters. But to get to know those characters, the other ingredient we need are questions. Characters and questions. So I'd like to ask some questions today, and I need a little bit of help with this. Uh, do I have a volunteer, someone to come up here? Gonna go right back there. Come on up. Yes. With the Barbie shirt. I am so excited. Because today we've got talk like that, okay. A very special guest. Go ahead and take a seat right up Thank here. You. Thank you. I I am such a big fan of yours, or I have been for the past um, what time is it? About the past ten minutes here. Uh, with us today. We have the one, the only, Dravo Squunny. Dravo, you look pretty excited here. Is there a reason you're so excited? Yes. Yes? And, and what, what, what would that reason be? Mm, to run a lot. To run a lot. So you like running? Yes. And you've been doing a lot of running today? Yeah, I'm so tired and happy. Tired and happy at the yes. same time. Yeah. You know, maybe we need to add a bit of that tired in here, too. So, if feeling tired, maybe the eyebrows are just a little bit worried, or maybe there's some like lines around the eyes, kind of, whew, this has been exhausting, but I'm still so excited. So, where do you run to? Me? To California. To California? And I got California rolls too. Yeah. Yes. Do you just go back and forth along the coast sometimes? Do you run on the water? Do you run on the land? Where are you doing your running at? Mm. Today, mm -hmm. I will go to run to Canada, and I came to here to see you. No way. You came here to see me? Yes. And I, like, just came here to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Does anyone in our audience have a question for, for Dravo today? Hi. What would you like to ask Dravo today? My favorite color? Ooh. Yes. Mm. Big, tough questions here. Mm, green. Green, yes. Um, is there a reason why? Why? Because I'm green. Because you're green. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I, my mistake. I, I'll sh be sure to fix that later and make sure the coloring is correct. Mm -hmm. Let's get okay. one more question from our audience today. Yes. Needs hair? How do you feel about my drawing of you? Do you think it's accurate? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. What? Other than the green. Hmm? And the green. Yeah, you forgot the green. Forgot the green. Yeah, okay. you did. Are you always green? Yes. Is Just it? when I'm sad, I turn blue. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Because sometimes it's not easy being green? Yeah, sometimes I know. And sometimes no. I want to paint myself purple. When I'm not in the mode. Yeah, not currently? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There we have it. I'd love to find out more about that, but we only have so long with, with Dravo today. Can we get a round of applause for Dravo? Thank you. And, and before you leave the stage, Dravo, to continue your story, would you please take this with you? Yes. And Thank fill that out for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
all of it. One more round of applause for Dravo today. Thank you. So if I was to get, if I was to make a book about Dravo, I would spend, how long with this character in order to make a book about them? What's your guess? How long would I need to spend with them? A month? A month? Month's a pretty good amount of time. What if I told you I usually spend years getting to know my characters before I make a book about them? That does make sense to you? Yeah, often I'll spend years. That's the way it was with a particular duo. Ah, put it there. Which I'd like to share a little bit about. Narwhal and Jelly. Which I first decided to start drawing a narwhal because of this book, Polar Obsession by Paul Nicklin. He's an incredible photographer. Um, and I have to confess, I did not know much about narwhals until I opened up this book and saw photographs like this one. And I was instantly captivated. So my narwhal knowledge up until that point was pretty much limited to the movie Elf. Hi, buddy. Hope you find your dad. That's, a, that's like the extent of what I knew about narwhals. Um, but then seeing these photographs of actual narwhals, you know, it's a reminder to me of just how incredible this world of ours can be. Because they're this creature that doesn't seem like they should be real, but they are. And, and this, this great reminder of just, just how extraordinary this life of ours, how, how extraordinary it can be. Um, and so I started drawing them. And my first drawing looked like this. This is Narwhal from 2012. And this is back to those pineapples. When I'm getting to know my characters, I'm going to stack those pineapples up a lot. I'm going to spend a lot of time with them practicing. And so I draw my characters again and again and again. And I fill page after page after page, usually in my sketchbooks, which I brought a couple of my sketchbooks with me today. Now there's a fair few of us in the room, so what I'm going to ask is just to flip through a couple pages and then pass it on so that everyone has a chance to take a look. I'm going to start one over here. I'm going to start another over here. And another one back up here. So. My sketchbooks are a place where I'm free to explore, to observe, to notice, to just see what comes. And then I look back at the sketches and go, huh, there's some stuff that's happening here. Like this narwhal that kept showing up in my sketchbooks would often be accompanied by this jellyfish. And so I thought maybe there's some sort of friendship here or some sort of relationship between these characters. Narwhal typically seemed to be smiling, pretty happy. Jelly had a much wider range of emotions I'd draw Jelly with. And then Narwhal often was dressing up. And so I thought maybe this character has quite the imagination. But it didn't fully click for me who Narwhal and Jelly were until one day I was waiting in line for, waffle, uh, for ice cream when the smell of waffle cones came wafting into my nose mixing with those narwhal thoughts that were already up there. And some sweet stuff started to happen. I was connecting the shape of the cone with the shape of the narwhal's... It looks like a horn, right? In fact, it's a giant tooth. Narwhals are a two-toothed whale, one of which grows out of the upper lip into the tusk. Um, and occasionally, both teeth grow out into tusks. That's very, very rare. Uh, but I was going, hmm. What if this character I've been drawing was just as sweet and awesome as ice cream and waffle cones? So pretty much has this sugar-based personality. Is excited about everything and everybody all the time. And the next thing I know, Narwhal is swimming about in my brain. I've been spending enough time with Narwhal that Narwhal suddenly is feeling very much real to me. And that night, I would end up drawing three different Narwhal and Jelly stories, one of which would involve a lot of dressing up but it wouldn't make it into the final first book. It would take me quite a bit longer until I finally got around to making this one, A Super Scary Narwhaloween, which is the eighth book in the series, um, and the new one this year, in which I finally got to have Narwhal try out all sorts of costumes, or costume combinations, 
Um, but I thought I would show you a little peek at something that you wouldn't be able to see if you opened up this book. Uh, one of the other versions of a narwhal and jelly Halloween story. Because do you think I get the idea that's going to be the final book right from the start? No. I try out all sorts of things before I find the one that feels right. Um, and I'm getting a lot of help as I go along. So just like you have uh, teachers that help you with your projects, and uh, you might even ask some of your classmates for help with your projects, I work with an editor who helped me in a similar way, an art director who is also helping me, and then I also meet up with other authors and illustrators, and we'll take a look at each other's books and say, I think this part's working, or I'm not so sure about that. And hopefully get the book to the best place it can be. But I want to share where it very first starts when I have an idea for, for a book. Which, you'll notice that the drawings are very quick and rough and loose. Does anyone else have this problem? You have this great image in your head, you go to put it on paper, and it doesn't look like anything it did in your head. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. And so I have to give myself the okay to say, hey, it's all right. I'll just give it my best go and see what comes of it. And this is what came of one of those times. Boo, by some guy called Ben Clanton. Whoosh, boo, narwhal, I know it's you. So if you've read a super scary narwhal wing, this is a bit of a different reaction for Jelly. In the book, Jelly's pretty frightened when narwhal's popping out. In the this one, though, instead it was Jelly kind of knows what's going on and what's the idea. Meow. Narwhal, what are you dressed at now? Yee hee hee. Narwhal, you can't trick me. A bat? Narwhal, you'll have to do better than that. Roar! A monster? Got any more? Click clack. Hmm. Narwhal, I think you might be on the right track. Vlad? Not bad. But Narwhal, you can't trick me. We'll see. I wonder what else Narwhal will try. A fly? Maybe a mummy? Or a big blue bunny? Or a fairy? Or berry? Boo! Ghost again? That won't do. Narwhal, I know it's... You? But if not you, then who? Boo. All through. And this was my idea for the back cover. It'd say something like, Narwhal's disguised. Will Jelly be surprised? And that was the very first idea. Or actually, maybe this was the second idea I had for what a Narwhal um, holiday, a nar Narwhaloween, a Halloween Narwhal and Jelly would look like. So what's next for Narwhal and Jelly? This is a very super sneaky sneak peek. This is going to be book nine. I'm finished with art. Narwhal Sweet Tooth. Um, very happy with how it turned out. I hope you'll like it too. It'll come out next year. But I want to talk about some more stuff too that I like to fill this page with, such as unicorns. Robots, robot unicorns, monsters, dragons, and of course, as promised, potatoes. <laughs> so I started drawing these potatoes around the same time I started drawing Narwhal and Jelly back in 2012. And they first started looking like this, these kind of dirt-clawed creatures. They had stuff growing out of the tops of their heads. And they morphed and changed, and they started to look more like this. And I love to draw cute stuff in my sketchbooks. And anytime I go to draw like a little itty bitty bunny, next thing I'd know, one of these monster potatoes would be appearing about to devour it. And they wouldn't go away. So I went, OK, maybe these, these potatoes need a story. But I like to be able to root for my main character, my protagonist. And so I made it a little more friendly. And they went from monster potatoes to these mutant potatoes, 
rounded out the teeth. And that would spark the idea for Rot the Cutest in the World and the other Tater Tales books that I've been working on. The next one of which will be coming out in the spring is this one, The King of the World. But I wanted to read for you Rot the Cutest in the World. Whoops, giving away the ending. Forget that you saw that. <laughs> Mind wipe, everyone. Rot, the cutest in the world, by that um, Ben Clanton guy again. Hello, this is Rot. He's a mutant potato. Like most mutant potatoes, Rot loves mud, eating stuff, yum, yum, yum. Checkers, King Me, Fooey, and all sorts of games and contests. Steering contest, Ray, set, go! I surrender. Your victory. So when Rot sees a sign that says, Cutest in the world contest! He can't wait to enter. <laughs> Rot is sure he'll win. He is so sure he sings a winning song. <laughs> I'm the cutest in the world. The cutest in the world. The cutest, cutest, cutest in the world. I'm really sorry if you have nightmares tonight. <laughs> my ears, my poor ears. What is that awful sound? But then Rot sees the other contestants. There's an itty bitty baby bunny with fluffy floppy ears. A little, little bow-witching, bow-whiskered, cuddly kitten. And an eeny weeny pink and peppy jolly jellyfish. Who for some reason just floats around in the air. Don't ask me why, it's not like I'm the author. The other contestants don't think much of Rot's chances. My poor, adorable eyes. It's hideous! Ick, I think I'm gonna be. We're okay, we're good. Whoa. Rot considers eating everyone. He would win for sure if he were the only contestant. Nom, nom, nom. But would it be a very nice thing to do? Yeah, it would probably give him a stomachache. Maybe Rot would be cuter if you have big ears like the bunny. Uh, look, I look like you. Uh, no. <laughs> or maybe it'd help if you had whiskers like the kitten. They're kind of itchy. You look ridiculous. Take those off. Perhaps if you were pink and peppy like the jellyfish. We're pink and we're happy. But does he look very happy? No. Smiling. But again, it goes back to we need to look at every part of the body, right, to see how someone's really feeling. None of it makes Rot feel any cuter. So Rot decides to just be himself. He doesn't stand a chance. Is he actually going up there? That takes guts. Last up, I present to you Rot. Rot steps on stage and struts his stuff. He smiles his biggest smile. Yeah. <laughs> he shows his best side. What do the judges think? Drum roll, please. Uh, Rod is the cutest in the world. I think I'm in love. He's perfect. Seriously? No way. Huh. 
Brock gets a great big trophy. It is so shiny that Rock can see his reflection. And Rock thinks he looks like the cutest in the world. Ugh. This contest was totally rigged. Wait. Are you wearing a unibrow? Um, do you like it? And that is, of course, the end. And there we have it. That's Rot, the cutest in the world. Thank you. Now, I've been doing a lot of talking. I want to hear from you. I'm curious, what are you wondering about? What do you want to know about writing, illustrating, making books? Does anyone have a question for me? Yes. Why did I think everyone was a cowboy <laughs> when I Montana? I don't know why I had that in my head. Um, I, think, I think one of my parents had been like, oh yeah, there's cowboys in Montana. And I, was, I just like latched onto that because I was like, oh yeah, that would be really cool. Um, at least in my head at that time, that was like something that would be amazing. Um, certainly writing horses was something that appealed to me a lot. Yes. Why did I think I should become an author? Great question. So, I mentioned that I was volunteering in an elementary school, reading books with, with kids like No David. I just, I enjoyed it so much, the reading of it, that I just wondered, you know, would I find that same enjoyment if I was trying to make books? And it turned out I did. That's something I just love to do. Um, coming up with characters, spending time with them. Uh, do you know the main person I write all these for? I have three kids. I'm making them all for me. Things that I find interesting or funny, and then I'm hoping that others will too. Um, yeah, it's because I like it. Yes. Sorry, one more time. Do I still like cowboys? Um, <laughs> do I still like cowboys? Uh, that my opinion about cowboys has become more complicated. Um, yes. What gave me the idea for rot? So I was drawing those potatoes, and as I was um, drawing these potatoes, I was just having so much fun with it. I was wondering, who are these potatoes? And I start basing a lot of it just kind of off my own childhood, too. So these potatoes ended up being very competitive. There's this sibling dynamic going on. So one of the characters in the, in the um, series is called Snot. And Snot is based off of my big sister, who I gave her the nickname of Mean Green Samantha Jean. She was a year older than me, still, still is. Um, we get along much better now, but when we were kids, we didn't always get along so well. And that's been a, a great source of um, kind of exploring stories with those characters, is, is what it's like to have siblings. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you one more time to repeat that. Well, that's, a, that's a neat question. So the question was, have I ever had an idea where I was going, oh, I bet a lot of people would like that, but I wasn't actually that into it myself? Yeah, I have had moments like that. And do you think I've ever made one of those books? No. Um, I, only, I only want to be spending my, my time on the books that I'm, I'm really going to enjoy making because I think 
if I tried to make a book that I thought everyone else would like, or that a lot of people would like, but my heart wasn't into it, do you think I'd do a very good job telling that story? I don't think I would. I think my heart would have to be in it to, in order to make it. Yes? Do my kids read the first drafts? Um, occasionally now they do. Uh, I have a new book out called Ploof, and um, my kiddos definitely helped with whenever I'd read that one to them, and I'd get a sense for what parts they were responding to and really enjoying, and um, that helped inform me about how I might change aspects of the book. It's really fun just to, to get them involved in that process. Um, Yeah, so th they definitely act as kind of my first judges. Uh, their opinions aren't always the same as mine. <laughs> yes? My favorite writer. That's a great question. Um, I would have a hard time picking my favorite uh, because there are so many I like. But the first name that jumped to mind when you asked uh, just because I love reading her books aloud with my kids, is Julia Donaldson. So she was the, the first name to come to mind. Yes. Why name Rot Rot? Well, I gave it a lot of thought. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, I thought about it a lot and, and it just seemed like the best uh, for, for, for Rot. I don't know, sometimes a name just kind of sticks and it's the one that feels right for that character. It's hard to describe sometimes. Um, and then I have had the, the occasional time though where I've given a character a name and I'm like, this is who this character is. And then I find out about this other character that has the same name and there's like enough similarity within the name that I, I have to rethink what the name of my character is, and that's so tough. But then eventually I come back around, um, and usually by a year after I've made the switch, I'm like, oh yeah, that was always meant to be the name, even though I've been convinced about the other one before. Yes? I do, I have, I have a dog, uh, her name's Tilly. She's a year old, and she, she's very cute and very chaotic. Do I have a picture of Tilly? I would have to search it out on here. I don't have one handy. Yes? Who would be your favorite character out of all your books? Favorite character, you are going to ask the same thing? My favorite character out of all my books. I love reading aloud, Rot. Love spending time with the mutant potatoes. Um, I relate to Jelly a lot. I'm also a bit of a worry wart and not so sure about things. Um, but like Jelly, I love spending time with Narwhal uh, because Narwhal kind of gets me swept up in these fun escapades and I'm just always curious where Narwhal is going to take me. So I'm probably going to say Narwhal. Yeah, one last one. Yes. Uh, Dravo, like an actual book? Dravo, an actual book? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> like I said that, um, the character I had earlier up there, the platypus unicorn, platycorn, ended up making it into a book. Uh, I had another time where I was playing a drawing game with some students and made a character called Mo. And Mo was one of those um, characters too that ended up, yeah, making it into a book but came from, from a session like this. So who knows? It's a fun character. I like that combination. Who knew that a dragon, an avocado, and a squirrel, and a bunny? Oh, I forgot the unicorn part. <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> My apologies, Dravo. I, I'm sorry, I, thought I forgot the horn. There we go. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. If you still had a question for me, I'm going to be signing over here. I'd love for you, if, if it's all right with, with those you're here with, to be able to come up and, and ask me those questions. I'd love to talk with you.
thanks so much for joining me today. And thank you to the Vancouver Writers Festival for, for having me.